Yeah, right. <laughs> Alright. So friends, grab your data sheet. We have a couple more data sets I want to play with. We won't do them all because there's there's no need to do them all. But if you look back on we'll go back to the last page. I've been drinking a lot of cool water, trying to swim butterfly. I think I'm I think I'm bleaching out my trachea. <laughs> so Take a look at the top of page four. Top of page four, you've got a bunch of subjects that are in a study about sound. I was drawn to this subject. I was drawn to this subject because watching my wife work is amazing. She could be watching television, like talking to Max and balancing her checkbook all at the same time. As you, as you see right now, I'm standing still while I'm talking to you. Because I think if I tried to walk and talk, I'd trip over something and break my face. I'd get a CPR to myself. So I was always interested in the idea of that, 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 and, and there was a study you guys looked at weeks ago that, that uh, Col uh, not Columbia, um, what's the big school? Stanford looked at multitasking and light media, heavy media multitaskers and how well they can perform on certain tasks. I always, I'm always drawn to those because so many of us try to multitask so much and being a bike commuter, I'm all about that because I said, I'm pretty convinced that a COCC student's car on average will not start unless the cell phone is in their ear. I'm almost, I'm pretty convinced of that. Pretty convinced of that. And I'm always, I'm always drawn to studies that test multitasking. Always drawn to that. And this is kind of related. It's the idea of sound versus not sound and different kinds of sounds. So take a look at the data set. Take a look at the data set. Look what they're testing. Look what they're testing. The very top of page four. And I wish I had numbered the pages. Something else to fix. So, why is this different than a goodness of fit test? Hmm? What do you think, Darla? Good. There's three possibilities. And, go ahead, go ahead, Gary, help me out. We're just looking for why. I, that's actually, darling, by May, that's how it's kind of similar to a goodness of fit test. And then it's got more than two, it's got three, potentially more, but only three here. But what are we testing? Mary, go ahead. Not percentages. Not percentages, averages. We're seeing how these folks do on average on a multiple choice test. How many of you, the first thing you thought of, this is me anyway, the first thing I thought of was how much stock can we put in this multiple choice test to measure performance on, a, on, on an exam. Potentially not a whole lot. This is a research methods question, but let's trust it. Let's trust the assessment, trust the instrument. You guys take research methods classes. That's the last time I'll say that now. Let that go. I've said it like pretty much once a week all term. But yes, Mary, that is, Darla's got the similarity in that there are three, there are three categories. Mary's got the difference in that we're not testing a percentage of success, but an average score on an assessment on average score on assessment. Does everybody kind of catch that, that slight distinction? Now, this completes, if you will, the flow chart from this class, which we're up on the board again on, on Thursday as we were reviewing. We started with hypothesis testing, and it went down to one parameter, a one prop Z and a t-test, boom. And then that t-test was matched pairs. And then we had two proportions, or two separate independent means, and that was wonderful, and we had a great time. And then we went to three or more proportions. And that was even better, because it was called Goff. And now we're at three or more, potentially more, independent averages. And this guy is called an ANOVA. This is called an ANOVA when you're testing three or more independent means. Independent means. And it's called a uh, NOVA. Actually, it's there. And the reason it's called a NOVA, I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to show you. It's, it's, it stands for analysis of, a is analysis, of variance. This is the worst job of explaining that I've ever done in my life. I apologize. Analysis of variance. And you're probably saying to yourself, why the hell are you looking at variance? You should be talking about means. 
Actually, variance is all about means. The way you calculate variance is knowing the averages of something. I mean, remember what standard deviation is at its heart? It's the average distance away from average. Exactly. It's on average how far away you are from the average. So testing variances to test means is actually really freaking slick. Really, really, really slick. It was done by a dude named Fisher. That's, the, the test is actually named after him. It's called the F-test. We'll come back to that. That's why I named my test the C-tests. Like the name of people that are impressive. I think Joe Strummer and uh, Mick Jones and the guys in the class are pretty impressive, not statistically. So Fisher, the F-test. We'll see what that's all about momentarily. So you've got your data. You've got your data in front of you. How are we going to test it? Well, I'll show you. And then we'll never do this. Here's how you test it. Here, here are your data scores like we have right now. You've got the constant sound group, you've got the random sound group, and you got the no sound group. You know what? Before we go any further, before we go any further, let's, let's pause this. Grab those data, put them into three lists on your TI. Let's pause the 